The next uh, instrument for transportation security policy making is presidential directives and nominations. Because in US, president is the big boss of um, administrative branch of the government, right? So he or she, um, so far there was no she president, right? So, so far, hey, let's just say, hey, uh, he has the authority to just assign some people to the leadership, especially cabinet level um, department leadership, okay? So presidents have a definite role in the legislative process, but um, still some nominations need to get passed by Congress, especially Senate. So, but Congress generally has the last word in the arena. So let's see. Also uh, presidential directives uh, to achieve policy goals set uniform standards for managing the executive branch or outline a policy view intended to influence the behavior of private citizens. Okay, so a president can um, issue directives can nominate people for leadership. And uh, I would say some of these nominations and directives, they need to get passed, like I mentioned before, by Congress, but some of them, um, they do not need the permission of Congress to be effective, to be effective. And uh, let's say two types of presidential directives. The first one is called Homeland Security Presidential Directive. Um, it is used by different presidents. It's not exclusive to one or several specific presidents, okay? Um, uh, uh, record and communicate uh, presidential decisions about the homeland security policies of US. Of course, HSPD is the type of directive that is related to uh, transportation security because transportation security is of course a part of land of homeland security, right? And another type of directive, directives um, is called Presidential Policy Directives, PPDs. Um, it was used by President Barack Obama, so exclusive to him. He used them to uh, promulgate his decisions on mainly national security, not homeland security matters. Okay, PPDs, they are also, they could be related to transportation security. and. Uh, um, uh, they are not, the, the special part about PPDs is that they are not exclusive for Homeland Security, but for national security. So what's the land between, what's the difference? Sorry, what's the difference between Homeland Security and national security? Homeland Security focuses more on the security uh, within the geographic boundaries of this country, of the United States. Okay, national security, is uh, defined at a larger scale. For example, a uh, US has a lot of um, military bases abroad, right? The security of them should be a part of national security, but because these bases, they are not located in the homeland, not on US soil. So uh, their security may not be a part of uh, homeland security. So that's the difference here. Okay, so uh, two types of uh, presidential directives are related to um, uh, transportation security, okay, HSPD and the PPDs. Okay, so here are some HSPDs related, specifically related to transportation security. Uh, HSPD 6 established the policies and procedures for developing and using a database of known or suspected terrorists. Okay, so this is, um, the, this database can be used to create, to establish something we mentioned before, uh, the pre-screening system, right? Uh, like I mentioned before, it's a blacklist or whitelist system. It decides who can or who cannot or who are not allowed to use um, transportation vehicles, most likely um, airplanes, but it's also possible for, for, for trains, for 
bus buses are pretty hard to control, but maybe for trains and uh, um, definitely for airplanes. Okay, HSPD 11 uh, enhanced terrorist related screening while facilitating the efficiency of transportation systems. Uh, HSPD 13 maritime is about maritime security uh, that establishes US policy guidelines and implementation actions to enhance US maritime safety. Um, HSPD 16 identified threats to aviation security and targets and tactics of terrorists and criminals, outlined the roles and responsibilities within the aviation security system. Okay, and the HSPD 19 directed the Justice Department in coordination with DHS to develop a report on how to more effectively address explosive attacks. Uh, 24 uh, provided a federal framework for applying existing and emerging uh, biometric technologies in screening processes, for example, fingerprint. Um, some more advanced um, technology may use your voice or, uh, or examine your eyes um, to identify your to identify who you are, right? right? Or um, use specific cars uh, for specific uh, restricted areas, right? Or, or a personnel database system to, for, for restrict, restricted areas in ports, in airports, right? Uh, PPD-17, obviously this one was from President uh, Barack Obama, replaced um, HSPD-19, okay? And emphasized on counting uh, improvised explosive devices, IED. You know, this uh, improvised explosive devices, they are, they are the main weapon used by um, Mideast terrorists to hurt um, military units abroad the US, right? Um, means that um, with very simple um, materials, right, uh, terrorists make bombs. Okay, usually they're attached to a car or to something that is not that important could be ignored by by soldiers by by police but suddenly there is an uh, explosion then characters right and uh, um, i should also mention that hspd um established after 9 11. so uh this president hspds um they could be um uh, issued by President George Bush Jr. Um, then who's after that? Uh, President Obama, right? I'm not sure about President Trump, but you should know um, HSPD is something after 9-11, okay? And uh, uh, besides presidential directives, there are also presidential nominations uh, because uh, all those leaders in different departments, they are crucial to security, uh, transportation security policy making. Of course, uh, not only transportation security po uh, policy making, but all policy making, right? So uh, the authority to make appointments to executive branch agencies, commissions, and other federal entities. And uh, uh, some of them, like, I, uh, like we have mentioned before, um, presidential appointments requiring Senate confirmation accounting for 33% of all political uh, appointees. A presidential appointments not requiring Senate confirmation accounting for only 9% of all uh, political appointees. And other political appoint appointments accounting for 9% of all political appointees. So uh, I would say that um, if, if the, 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 the position is uh, more important than others, especially the, the leader uh, of uh, cabinet level departments, then I would say there would be hearings from the Senate, from the Congress, right? Uh, to make sure that this person appointed by the president is eligible, is qualified, Right? This is actually what the Congress is doing right now because the new administration is uh, just there for, for one or two weeks. Right? And uh, there are a lot of hearings um, um, uh, hosted by the Congress to make sure that um, those um, uh, 
cabinet level uh, leaders, they are qualified. Okay, so you can consider these hearings as huge interviews, right? Right. All those uh, uh, people uh, appointed by presidents, uh, by the president, they are trying to get the job. They're trying to get the job. Okay, here is a list of uh, transportation security related positions requiring Senate confirmation, which means that the president can assign uh, people to different positions. Some of these positions, they are not that important. So uh, president himself can decide, but for the rest of them, um, uh, the Congress should still nod. Then those people can get the job. Okay, um, you can say DH, DHS leaders and uh, uh, TSA leaders, they need hearings from the Congress to get the job. Okay, um, they, 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 they have been appointed by the president, but that's not good enough. And FEMA, right, FEMA, uh, FEMA is also a part of DHS. And uh, what else? Um, yeah, DHA, uh, DHS uh, offices and uh, important offices and the branches of DHS, uh, their leaders need to be um, to be to be interviewed by the Congress, right? Coast Guard, right? Uh, DOT leader, uh, DOT deputy leader of FAA leader, uh, Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. So for land transportation security, right? Railroad admi administration, also pipeline and hazardous material safety administration. Uh, pipeline is actually um, can be considered. Pipeline can be considered as another type of transportation, right? Uh, there is no people, but there is cargo, right? Uh, natural gas, petroleum, right? Gasoline. They are. I mean, they can be transported by trucks, by trains, but pipeline can also do that and it's actually cheaper. So I would say, yeah, pipeline is another type of transportation. And the Amtrak, a uh, board of directors, Amtrak is the passenger railway system uh, in the United States, right? It was created by the government, but now it is, it is operated by private companies, okay? You don't have to memorize them, but you should know that transportation security related uh, leadership uh, can be assigned by United States president. But some, not, some of them need to uh, get passed through the Congress to get the job, okay? To get the job. So the last type of instrument I want to introduce um, that is related to transportation security policy making is called federal regulations, federal regulations. So what are regulations? What's the difference between acts or in another word, laws and regulations, right? So a law or an act is something mm, written by politicians, by legislators and uh, uh, get passed by the Congress and signed by the president, okay? But regulations are issued by, by agencies. Okay, and uh, uh, regulations is a, is a principal means by which public policy is implemented. So um, all those regulations, they are more specific than laws, right? Their uh, regulations are usually about standards and rules issued by um, agencies with a specific expertise. Okay, laws, they are from Congress, they are from uh, legislators, but regulations, they are not law. They are issued by different agencies, organizations to, 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 to make sure a specific policy is implemented. Okay, that's regulation. So the, 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 uh, a, a congressional acts a congressional act requires a federal agency to issue a rule. So the rule here is to support the act, to support the implementation of the policy, right? And, and then a regulation is drafted by the agency, of course, related agency, right? FAA cannot issue a regulation for maritime transportation security, right? So uh, a regulation is drafted by the agency and submitted to related offices for review, 
for review. And then publication of the regulation in the federal register no less than 30 days before it is to take effect. Okay, so basically uh, there is firstly law or act. Then this act or law requires a specific rules to make sure the policy is implemented through these rules. Okay, then a federal agency or several agencies, uh, they need to <clears throat> write rules or uh, say regulations. And then uh, these regulations are reviewed, are reviewed and then published. Okay, so for example, maritime security regulations. Most federal maritime security regulations are contained in Title 33, Chapter 1, Subchapter H of the Code of Federal Regulations. So CFR is, um, is the code of US government to, 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 to issue regulations, okay? And designated to implement the Maritime Transportation Security Act of 2002. So the relationship is here. So uh, Title 33, Chapter 1, Subchapter H of the CFR was established to what? To implement MTSA. So you can see this is like a funnel. The top of the funnel is a law and the law is broad. Right, Law, laws define uh, something you cannot do, but there is no specific rules or standards. Then um, related uh, agencies, they need to, 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 to issue, to write and publish regulations to make sure that uh, the policy um, created by this law is more specific, is specified with standards and rules. So this funnel is getting narrower and narrower, right? And then you have to follow these regulations. When you follow these regulations, uh, you're not going to violate associated laws. Okay, so that's the relationship between regulations and laws. And um, I need to mention this again. Uh, laws, can, uh, laws have another name, in US at least. They're also called ACTS, A-C-T-S, right? Okay, aviation security regulations are the regulations are found primarily in chapter uh, that's 12, chapter 12, uh, subject, sub chapter C of title 49 CFR. Okay, okay. But the passenger aviation security fees are located in sub chapter A. So, um, it's complex, it's complex. And land, sec land security regulations, um, Promulgation of federal rules for land transportation has been more limited and less coordinated compared to uh, maritime transportation and aviation regulations. And aviation uh, regulations of land transportation security uh, can be found in chapter one, two, three, four, six, seven, and 12 of Title Nine, Title 49 CFR, Code of Federal Regulations, because land transportation um, mode is more complex than maritime and aviation, okay? And compared to aviation uh, and maritime security, um, or say compared to aviation transportation systems and maritime transportation systems, at least in US, land transportation systems, they're less likely to be attacked, okay? Uh, only in US, okay? But around the world, uh, land transportation so uh, land transportation systems are still largest targets for terrorist attacks. Okay, okay. Okay, that's all I want to say about uh, transportation security policy making. So um, if you go back to the first of, uh, to, to, to first several slides and specifically that a slide with uh, a photo of US Congress, uh, capital, you will see that this whole lecture is about different in instruments for transportation security policy making. Okay, uh, I will just stop here. And for this week, I will just use another video to give you a brief review for what we have learned so far and what you need to know for the exam uh, on next Tuesday. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll just stop here. Okay. Thank you.